So Monster Hunter Rise is here and I feel pretty confident in saying that we're all having a blast with it. As we know from installments like Worldborn, with a new title there's a bunch of people that will eventually be joining the Monster Hunter community. For some of them it will be their first experience with Monster Hunter in general. With that in mind I wanted to make a video about how to play Monster Hunter and get the most out of the experience. Having played multiple titles, I know my first reaction was, wow, this is a lot to take in. Inevitably, that's going to be most people's reaction when they first come into the series, and that is by no means a bad thing. This is the case because every Monster Hunter game, and the series itself, has so much to enjoy and soak in. This video is going to contain all kinds of advice, whether it be subjective or objective, but make sure to go at your own desired pace. This is going to be more for the purpose of helping you form your own informed decisions. If you want the long and short of it, the TLDR, basically Monster Hunter is an absolute god tier franchise and you won't regret taking a chance on it. But let's get into it and I'll let you know how to play Monster Hunter and get the most out of it. Monster Hunter is not a super easy game. Make sure you keep that in mind as you start your journey. It's one of those games that you most definitely get out what you put into it, and then some. Chances are that everything isn't going to immediately click. Monster Hunter is a very deep game that rewards you for taking the time and putting in the effort to get better. But man, when things do click, it's such a fantastic and gratifying experience that will have you absorbed for hours upon hours. You have so many things to explore and do, but you're best off being patient and easing your way into some of the more advanced mechanics. You have 14 different weapon types, some that even have many variations within them, like different shelling and file types and what kind of ammo they can use. Are you starting to see already how dense this game is? You're going to cart, you're going to fail out of quest, you're going to be frustrated, but be patient, because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So as much as you're going to do those things, you're also going to get to experience the opposite. That Dark Souls-esque satisfaction of slaying a monster that's been absolutely wrecking you over and over and over again. The key to this is being patient. If you're having a rough go at it, step back, come back to things later. Or maybe get some more practice in with your weapon of choice to hone your skills. Or, if you really feel like you've hit a wall, look up some tips and tricks to kind of help you get over that hump. The rewards you get in the form of enjoyment, fun, and satisfaction is definitely not a one-to-one -one ratio. For the amount of effort you put into the game and learning its mechanics, you're going to get about 10 times that in playtime, gratification, and entertainment. My brother took the time to jump into the Monster Hunter series with me one of the times it went on sale, and I had pretty much done everything in the game myself. We got to around Anjanath, which is a lot of people's first wall as a world baby. It didn't instantly click and he ended up dropping things. On the opposite end of that spectrum, I have a home health nurse that jumped into the series with the introduction of world. She would tell me how hard things were and how frustrated she would get, but unlike my brother, she stuck with it and she's a huge fan of the series now and absolutely couldn't wait for Rise to come out. She was patient with her skills as a hunter, she took the time to learn more about the monsters and learn from any mistakes she may have made. Read the hunter's notes, soak in the dialogue you get from NPCs, take the necessary time to hone your skills. I cannot state enough just how much you can get out of a monster hunter game if you're patient with yourself. I've always been a firm believer that to an extent, in video games, the more freedom and flexibility you have the more potential there is for good times to be had. This is one of Monster Hunter's best qualities. There are so many skills you can have, so many armor pieces you can make, decorations, talismans, and the best part of it? Everything is viable. If you want to run a set that's absolutely loaded with things like defense boost and divine protection, you can do it and still get through any of the content. Is it going to be the most optimized or efficient route to take? Probably not, but guess what? It doesn't matter because it's your game and you can play it the way you want to. Now, if you're more into the meta grind, you've come to the right place as well. Monster Hunter is an absolute beast when it comes to numbers. There are so many damage amplifiers and hit zone values and elemental multipliers that if you want to get every single drip of damage out of the bottle you can get with great efficiency, once again, you've come to the right game. There's an abundance of content creators that bring you some of the best information and advice along with the cold hard numbers to help you do so. As great as this information is, just make sure you stick to the things you want to do. So you picked up the gun lance and you want shelling to be your primary damage dealer. Jack that artillery skill up and enjoy, guilt free. You have so much freedom to work with 
and you should take full advantage of that. If you have even the slightest inkling of wanting to try a certain build or playstyle, do it. In some games you get hard forced into using specific playstyles, but you're not going to find that here. You can pretty much search on YouTube for any kind of playstyle and you'll see someone speedrunning with it. Don't be afraid to experiment. Take in the wealth of information you'll find in game and online, then formulate your way to play Monster Hunter. There's 14 weapons, so I'm going to get straight to the point with this part. You're going to severely take away from the replayability of the game if you find one weapon you like and don't take the time to at least try out the other weapons. Luckily, the replayability of Monster Hunter is already one of the best out there, period. I can't deny at all that the feeling you get when you find that one weapon that just clicks is awesome. When I first started the Hunting Horn, I couldn't figure out why isn't everyone playing this weapon. It was the one I was always going to play. The one I was always going to gravitate towards no matter what. Then I tried Gunlance, and just like that, I had that same kind of feeling as I did when I played the Hunting Horn. It just started to click and I saw my skill continuing to improve. Then came the Insect Glaive, and boom, another weapon I clicked with. Fast forward a bit and you have my journey with the Charge Blade. This weapon took time for it to click with me, but it was beyond rewarding and gratifying when I did. I'm still polishing my skill with it big time, but I feel like you're getting the point. If I never would have tried anything beyond Hunting Horn, I would be missing out on so much potential fun. It might take a little extra time, training, and understanding with other weapons, but that feeling of it finally clicking never changes. Not to mention some monsters really are just a better or worse matchup with specific weapons. Their movements, movesets, and the environment they're in really can hinder or help the matchup potential with whatever weapon you may be using. If you take the time to have multiple weapons in your repertoire, you can choose the best matchup and have that leg up before you even start the hunt. Don't get me wrong, it's not a drastic change, but it's definitely more noticeable the more challenging the hunts start to get. Alright, before you click off the video, I swear, I'm not going to go on a rant as to why it's cruel to hunt video game monsters in a game called Monster Hunter. When I say they're more than just a monster, you'll very quickly notice how each of them tend to have their own personality. When you take on Bloodbath Diablos, it's exactly that. There's nothing but constant attacks and countering to keep you on your toes. The ferocity of its roars and attacks match that of the monster's own rage. One of my specific favorite monsters, Nursilla, just has such a quirky lovability to it when she does cute things like stab you with her sleep-inducing stinger and then calmly comes over and checks you over to make sure you aren't going to get up. Why does she do this? Because Nursilla hunts Gypsaros frequently and Gypsaros have a mechanic that they'll play dead and then wake up attacking frantically and ferociously. I can't even begin to rattle off all the facts that subs have told me during streams while I've been fighting the monster because this video would be ridiculously long. But the Monster Hunter team does not skimp out on the details at all when it comes to the monsters making them memorable and giving them a chance to shine while they're in the spotlight. Seriously, right now, stop this video, find someone you know who plays Monster Hunter, and play Basil Juice's theme, and see if they don't immediately Superman dive away. It plays towards the beauty of the gameplay as well. The monsters are who they are, and there's not much you can do to change that. You just have to figure out those tendencies, and figure out how to best counter it, or survive. Rathalos, for example, is a monster that can be very frustrating, because it loves to be in the air. And if you only have a fork and dinner plate to go at it, you're going to have to find some ledges or be sure to have some flash bombs handy. And even while there's monsters that have certain traits that annoy the hell out of me, like Nibble Snarf, who likes to go underground 24-7, when it's already mostly underground through the entirety of its fight, it's still unique. It still makes Nibble Snarf, Nibble Snarf and I absolutely love to hate it. Speaking of that sand sucking piss ant, there's a dope mechanic that you can use to make the fight less annoying and open up a window for punishment. If you place a bomb down and that little shit swallows it, it'll explode and actually launch it into the air out of the ground, but we're not done there yet. While it's up and out of the sand, you can actually run over and fish it out of the sand onto its back. And I'm using the term fish it out specifically because you literally whip out your fishing pole and drag that sucker out of the sand. Now, this is a monster that you come to pretty early on, so if they put that much effort into making a unique experience for an early tier monster, can you imagine what some of the later, stronger monsters would be like? Now, of course, it's understandable that people want to have the most powerful gear. They want all of the slots and want to jam pack skills in there. But does it really mean anything if you look like this? Let's be real. 
The saying that goes, you look good, you feel good, is a thousand percent true. There's so many pieces of armor that you can mix and match to make your hunter feel unique, look good, and in turn, make yourself feel accomplished. Monster Hunter even has a transmog S system with layered armor to help you keep the stats while you slay, queen. Don't get me wrong, there's going to be so many things that will bring you back to going on hunts, but fashion hunting is very much a fantastic extension of that replayability. You'd be surprised just how many people really take pride in their layered sets and how much work you can put into perfecting them. Discord servers even have contests on who can make the best looking layered sets. They'll throw down some guidelines for people to follow or come up with a theme and boom, people put together some of the best sets you'll ever see. A lot of the time Monster Hunter will have crossover events with different shows, games, and other things Capcom as well. This brings along with it plenty of additional weapons and armor for you to add to those layered sets. Let your creativity flow and show off the culmination of your many, many hunts. Roricon has a great video on the importance of taking your time in Monster Hunter, so definitely check that one out too on this topic. It's a cycle that a lot of gamers go through over and over again. Get a new game, hurry up and beat said new game, then be sad because you don't have a reason to play that game. You can even throw in there they complain that the game has no content, even though you bull rushed through the game and ignored any side or optional content. Fight the urge to do this. In Monster Hunter, you progress through varying ranks, and as you move up through these ranks, the monsters and hunts will become more challenging. In order to climb the ranks, you have to do specific key quests. There are side and optional quests that go along with those as well. I highly recommend that you take the time to do these side and optional quests, not only because they'll reward you with things like ingredients and other things to improve your playthrough, but you'll also be missing out on a lot of fun hunts and content. If you blow through the key quest and try to come back and do these other ones, it just won't have the same entertainment value. You'll finish them in minutes. I've gotten to experience both ends of this. With Worldborn, I was able to pace myself and really take in all the content it had to offer. Going back through the older games in the franchise, I went straight to the key quest to try and reach endgame content, and while some of the old games are absolutely fantastic and everyone should play them, I didn't feel like I got to absorb games like 4 Ultimate as much because I was bulldozing as fast as I could before Rise came out. There's just way too much charm, detail, and passion put into these games to pass on any kind of available content. Monster Hunter is unique in comparison to modern games because it has an insane level of replayability. So even if you do blow through the key quest, you still have 14 different weapons to try and master, armor and weapons to craft, for you and your Palamut and Palico buddies, those aforementioned side quests I was alluding to, and not to mention the various free updates that will be coming down the line to keep you busy for a while. Find friends to play with, get a group together and progress through the hub quest together. Even if you're like me and have no friends, you can find people to hunt with easier than ever with the like system that was implemented in Rise. Now that you have people that can be a crutch for you during hunts, learn that weapon that you really want to master but are currently terrible with. The moral of this story is to take your time. And don't be my brother and quit the game after two seconds because I still give him shit for that. The Monster Hunter community is one of the most inclusive, embracing, and most willing to mentor communities I've ever seen, if not literally the most. Just ask HeyJ how they reacted after he said he didn't like Monster Hunter. Never would you see that with another gaming community, which is why I'm making this video so that you will get to experience it firsthand as well. But that's going to be it for this one. While I've hit you with a lot of tips and advice, this is purely for guidance. If you want to ignore every single thing I said and still blow through the key quest, go for it. The golden rule of play the way you want to play always applies, but I swear, if you do that and then complain about how there's no content, Discord and Patreon links are in the description, so if you'd like to support and help the channel grow, it's always appreciated. If you liked the video, let me know with that thumbs up. Comment below what other tips or advice you have for new hunters, and if you are a new hunter with questions, toss them in the comments as well, and we'll help you out. If you're new to Rise or Monster Hunter in general, subscribe to the channel so you can check out my upcoming weapon series as to why I love each weapon in Monster Hunter Rise. Stay tuned for more Rise, Monster Hunter, and other gaming content streams, reviews, builds, and more. Have a good night, happy hunting, and I will see you guys in the next video.